G'day everyone, my name's Robbie Alexander and I am wearing a hat because I'm going fishing for redfin and it's bloody hot and the hat might be a bit awkward to tie my GoPro to but it's not as awkward as chemotherapy so I'm wearing a hat Alrighty, folks, I'm up here at Lake William Hovel. I'm chasing redfin now. When I was trawling up here in my kayak last week, I had a bit of success along this bay right here in front of me. So today it's too bloody hot to be floating around out there in the open in a kayak. So I'm going to wet wade, I'm going to swim, I'm going to wet my hair, I'm going to wet my hat, and I'm going to cast this little, if you can see it, this little strike tiger nymph soft plastic. Alrighty, folks, my GoPro is firmly attached to my head. I'm going out here to get wet because it is damn hot. I've got my Strike Tiger Nymph in ban banana, 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 banana shock colour on, and there is a sea eagle flying over there. I'm really, 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 really hoping that I can catch a small redfin while the sea eagle is still around because I reckon it is such an amazing thing to feed a sea eagle while you're fishing. Got him. Yes, at last. Now, where's the sea eagle? I've been here for a good half an hour. It's taken me a while to get this fish. If I kill this fish, will that lure the sea eagle over? I don't want to kill him in vain. I'm happy to kill him to feed the bird, but I don't want to kill him just for the sake of killing him. I reckon that if I break this fish's neck, I'll do it off camera, I'll just perform a manoeuvre on this fish. Now you'll see now he's got a bit of a dislocated neck. Now, I'm going to throw him really high in the hope that the sea eagle's watching me from wherever he is. And what you've got to remember with eagles is that they have eyesight that's something like six times better than ours. So even if he's sitting on top of the wall of the lake down there, he might have seen me throw that bird. That uh, redfin, I mean, it looked like a bird for, for the five seconds it was in the air. So I'm going to move away from that a little bit now. I'm going to leave that out there and just hope that the big sea eagle sees it, comes along and says, thanks very much, Robbie, and that's lunch. Across the warm shallows. Let's see what I can find. Got him. Ha! He's tiny. I'm not going to feed this one to the sea eagle because the other one's still floating around out there. I've had quite a few little weeny fish like this follow my lure in and not hook up today. There we go, folks. I'll, I'll give him the bass hold. I'll put my thumb in his mouth. He is not very big. See ya, buddy. See ya, mate. Caught on the banana na na banana na -na. banana shock. Soft plastic it's by Strike Tiger Nymph. By Strike Tiger. <laughs> Right, yeah, time for a story. Right, yeah, folks, I released that redfin, and I know that people are going to comment and say you shouldn't release redfin because they're vermin. Well, let me tell you something. Up here, if there wasn't redfin in Lake William Hovel, I would have no reason to come here fishing in the summer. There's trout here that we catch in the cooler months, but you don't catch them here this time of year. The only reason I come up here fishing is for the redfin. Without them here, I wouldn't bother coming. So that's why I released them. End of story. Oh, had a touch. Got him. <laughs> there we go. Another little redfin. If Alma Fudd was here, he'd say, Shh, I'm hunting Wedfin. <laughs> Rightio, folks, I've decided to change plastics. I've still got the same jig head, but I've gone to the 1.5 inch curl tail grub by Strike Tiger, and I've gone to the June Bug colour. I just wanted something a little bit more natural colour. The water is so clear up here, and I'm just wondering whether maybe a more natural colour might be a little bit more enticing than something that's really out there like the banana shock. Time will tell. Got 
Got him. Oh, I lost him. Got him. <laughs> look at the size of it. I'm getting a lot of strikes that won't hook up, and that is why. Have a look at the size of that red fin. I'm getting a lot of these tiny, rainy little red fin following my lure. <laughs> He's actually about twice the length of the lure if I stretch it out. <laughs> Right, finally hooked up one of those real tiny ones that have been. I must have hooked 20 of them this afternoon that haven't hooked up, I reckon. Oh, got him. <laughs> I thought I saw a flash, and then yeah, next thing you know, there's a fish on the end. Another little red fin. Switching to June bug may have helped. Oh, see you, mate. <laughs> the little June bug 1.5 inch grub. Now, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't give you guys fair warning. Lake Graham Hovel is absolutely beautiful. I love it up here. But the March flies are savage. <laughs> I must have been bitten 20 times today, I reckon. They're biting me on the back, they're biting me on the shoulders, and they bloody sting. Now, that's all right for a guy my size, but young kids might not like that too much, so. If you're planning on coming up here, which I encourage you to do because it is a wonderful place, make sure you bring air guard and just be prepared to uh, protect your kitties from the attack of the killer march flies because they're bloody shocking. Got him right at my feet. Look at that, right in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. getting a bit bigger now. Starting to get a little bit bigger. Now they're not, still not quite big enough to get a fillet out of, to get a fillet off, but he's getting a bit bigger. He's inhaled the, uh, the soft plastic. Oh yeah, the fish are getting bigger. Mate, I'm gonna catch your granddad. Got him. Little weeny one. That's the smallest one today. It's got to be. Have a look at that. That has got to be the smallest one. It's got the tiniest little bit of lip. Look. See ya, mate. <laughs> that has to be the tiniest bit I've caught today. <laughs> They've all been small, but that was off the chart. Got him. So it might be a little bit bigger actually. Oh, it might be just because he hit it a bit further out. He's certainly not a tiny, weeny little toddler like the last one that I caught. There he is. Ta da! Oh, he got off anyway. <laughs> Still not big enough to keep, but he was one of the bigger ones of the day. Well, there you go, eh? I'm having a blast up here. The old June bug's uh, coming into its own a little bit here. Got him. He hit it two or three times. Oh yeah. This one's got a bit of kick in him too. Oh, is he big enough to fill it? Oh, he's getting close. Oh, gee, folks. I could fill it him. I could so fill it that fish. He is a fillable fish. But I'm not going to on this occasion. I really, he's, I, I honestly believe that I could fill it that fish. Absolutely. I'd get a reasonable fillet off him. Egg and bread. Oh, I will I, won't I? Look, the Esky's in the car, way over there. I should have brought it with me. Anyway, that's the biggest one today, and he's getting closer to the fillet knife. Getting so much closer to the fillet knife. And he knows I might catch a big one shortly. Getting excited now. It actually feels good to have a couple of sort of more reasonable fish hit my lure now. They're still not big fish, but they're bigger than the little fingerlings that I've been catching. Oh, lately got him, another one. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've hit a school here, folks, and they that's not a school of big fish, but it's a school of bigger fish. Here we go. I'm on a redfin hat trick. 
I am on a redfin hat trick. Can I get three and three casts? I am having an absolute blast up here at the moment. Having a blast. Now he's pulled the plastic off the uh, the jig out a bit. Got a minute, it's done, it's done all right. This plastic's caught half a dozen fish in the last hour or so. Righto, folks. Redfin hat trick coming right up. I think I've located a school. Well, I've caught two or three in here, so they might uh, they might start to wander off a bit. You don't know. Some days you can find a school and catch 50. Some days you just get one or two and then that's it. No touches. Come on, come on. Give me the redfin hat trick. I missed out the other day when I was up here. Give me the redfin hat trick. It's not going to happen, folks. The redfin hat trick isn't going to happen. Didn't happen from the kayak. Didn't happen from the bank. Probably catch from this cast instead. <laughs> Got him. Yes. Bit of weight in this one, folks. <laughs> I hooked him in the uh, in the gut. But that doesn't look very comfortable. Any wonder there's a bit of weight. It's always funny when you foul hook a fish. They always feel like way bigger because they're upside down. <laughs> You're dragging against the current. See, mate, you deserve to go straight back. <laughs> There's a bit of weight in this one, folks. Pull out a fish three inches long. Got him. He hit that while it was sinking, this one. He did get off. He did too. Or he's coming towards me. He's coming towards me, look. Look at that. Oh my God. You look like a lure that I've got in my tackle box. I actually got sent a lure to my mail time segment recently from England. It was a, a Savage Gear Redfin lure, exactly the same as that, but about that long. It was twice the size of the fish I'm catching. <laughs> this is Redfin fishing, folks. This is where when it gets exciting. You can fish, or I've fished here for the last probably two hours, and I've caught, I think, five or six. But then all of a sudden, I've come to one little spot, I've found a school, and I've caught another five or six, just in the last 10 minutes. Last week, I spent three or four hours out here on my kayak, and I caught seven or eight Redfin, had a lot of fun. But you might find a school, and catch 20 or 30 at once. And that's redfin fishing. And that's why I say to people all the time, when you're fishing for redfin, if you're not catching any fish in a particular spot, move around. Move around and try and locate the schools. Because once you locate a school, you can have such exciting fishing, especially if it's a school of bigger size redfin, and that does happen. Got him. I paused it to let it sink. I was reeling it in. And I just paused it to let it sink back down to the bottom and it just, like a bite when you're using bait. Just went tap and a fish grabbed it while it was sinking. Mate, you're awesome. See you later. I was, I was reeling it in. Yeah, and I got it halfway in and I just stopped to let it sink and it had been sinking for a few seconds. All of a sudden, bang, there's a fish on. <laughs> the tail must have been kicking as it was sinking, I reckon. You hit it on the sink. Oh, a little redfin chased it out of the water then. There he is. He's hit it. Got him. No, I missed him. He's hitting it again. And again. Got him, that. <laughs> He's hitting it. Got him. <laughs> Look at the size of him. <laughs> that one I could be full would eat that. He's tiny. The uh, Making the change to the 1.5 inch Strike Tiger Curl Tail Grub in June bug colour has certainly paid dividends. Maybe the yellow was too bright. Maybe they just want something a bit more natural coloured. For whatever reason, the uh, this thistle was cleaning up. <laughs> For whatever reason, making the change has really changed my hookup rate. Righto folks, I'm going home, I've had an absolutely wonderful time, caught a stack of redfin, changing lures made the world a difference, going to the dune bug was a great thing to do. If you've liked this video, why not give it a big fat thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and then hopefully I'll see you on my next fishing adventure, don't forget, oh thanks for watching! <laughs>